Welcome back to Let's Play The Evil Within with me, Jerupidus. And we have just arrived inside the church where we were following Kidman. So let's explore in here. That sounded close. It's all right, I'm here. <coughs> Nothing is gonna get you. Get you, get you, get you, get you. Sounds like they're right below us. You have to stay with me. There's no other way. Well, why don't we go ahead and grab this map fragment right away? I believe that's the only one in the chapter. So we're all done with that already. And before we check on Joseph, let's just check in the rest of the area. See if we can scrounge up any uh, things to bring with us. And this chapter is called The Keeper, and that is for a very good reason. We are about to meet a brand new nemesis, and I'm really looking forward to it. I really like his design. But with that being said, why don't we talk to Joseph? Hey, Joseph. You still with me? <sighs> Sebastian. You ever had the urge to just jump? When you're on a high place... <coughs> or the subway rolls by. Imagine if you had that urge for a minute straight. Then two minutes. You fought it off three times now, Joseph. You're learning to stop it. You're not listening. I'm not worried about stopping it, Seb. I'm worried about not wanting to stop it. Some part of me wants to turn. I don't know why, and I can't reason it away. It's deeper than that. It's like instinct. And it's getting stronger. <laughs> Hold on. This way. And just like that, we're dropped into the catacombs below. I think Ruvik is such a cool villain. The way he's got that white hood and just looks all scarred up and stuff, it's awesome. Now, I will say this. The way that... Um, Joseph's sort of mental illness gets handled in this game is a little bit weak, but I think the idea is that this environment uh, really wears on you psychologically. Not just you, the player, it's wearing on me psychologically for sure. <laughs> I better start searching for my partners. But it takes the, uh call to the void that people have, what Joseph is describing there, where you just get these intrusive thoughts to just do something completely impulsive and jump in front of a train or something like that. Um, and it dials, it up, dials them up to 11. Now we have just a little bit of an exploration section here, and we're going to meet some new enemies. And I find they are very easy to deal with with the sniper rifle, so that's what we're going to do. Yeah. <sighs> 
And what they lack in um, being legitimately dangerous, they certainly make up for it in be being uh, creepy as all get out. <laughs> Just a few more breakable pots over here, and these pots really remind me of the castle section in Resident Evil 4. A lot of things in here do. Ooh, there's the missing person. It's a giant painting of him. So cool. <laughs> And it's hard for me because as much as I like the Resident Evil 4 sort of callbacks and references in this game, a lot of it ends up feeling maybe a little derivative. And it's like, can you be derivative if you're the same creator of the games? And I guess the answer is yes. Now, try as I might to stealth that area right there, I just never can. So I just let them aggro on me and then draw them all back here and take them out with the pistol. We have a few extra pistol rounds uh, waiting for us on the table over there. So that's how we'll try and deal with this. And my match missed. That is unfortunate. This is getting a little squirrely. Very nice of him to just wait there for me to get that off. <laughs> Alright, let's go grab those few extra handgun bullets. And now we can continue on. Should just be one more. And our reward for clearing this room is a bunch of green gel and some ammunition. I do wish I could take those sniper rifle rounds with me, but I just cannot. There's definitely a big trade-off for what I've done, which is getting the harpoon bolts all the way upgraded. Um, where you end up having to leave behind a decent amount of ammunition. And that can feel tough, but we are doing what we're doing for a very good reason. So while I'm going to have to put up with some weaknesses in our sort of build. Um, it's gonna end up working out just fine. Looks loose. Old lithograph. This lithograph was pried from a stone door where it seems to have been used as a key. And that's gonna open in front of us, but we do wanna check out back here before we leave. And I love that. There's no point to it other than it just being creepy. The pots shatter and then the painting ends up with blood all over the faces. It's awesome. Ooh, some shotgun shells. I could really use those. And what do we have through here? few trap parts, and it's another one of these safes. Uh, the first one we saw was on our desk, so why don't we open this one? And that's gonna be our first key, and it is filled, of course, with just <laughs> a mass of flesh. There are gonna be four total keys in here, including that one, and we will definitely find them all as usual. We've already gotten the map fragments, so we don't have to worry about that, so let's grab this document. Catacomb note. Help. The metallic pounding, he's coming. I run, but he follows. Help, God, help, 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 help. And I will admit that, uh... That note is sometimes how I feel against the, uh, Keeper. <laughs> he's one of those bosses where... If you're doing things well and kind of perfectly, he's not much of a threat at all, but if you screw up one time, it just completely goes sideways. Oh, 
Oh, shit. And right there is just a quick look at him. We already caught a glimpse of him. And I think it's kind of well done where... You get that little cup scene in the last chapter. You get the safe on your desk. Safe's in here. And then you catch another glimpse of him there. But he still has not uh, come to fight you yet. And I think that's kind of a uh, Jaws movie school of thought. Where you don't really show the monster until much later. You just kind of give tastes of it. And let your imagination run wild. Now let's go ahead and throw this stone tablet in here. It fits. Uh. And there is, of course, the safe room right up in front of us. Um, but we're not going to go there yet because we're going to get a lot of green gel in here. And we're going to take the left pathway first for a very good reason. Um, and that is that you need to turn off the gas before you take the right path. Or there's going to be a locker key which ends up being inaccessible. And I believe this part is to introduce you to the fact that turning these levers is very, very slow. Um, which is going to come up in a big way later on. And this is our proper introduction to these two-headed creatures. But one headshot with the sniper rifle is very good at taking them out. Yep, and I definitely want to do that because there are some nice rewards in these rooms that they're guarding. Maybe I will spend some pistol ammunition, considering I have a little bit extra there. It's just that the sniper rifle does such a great job of killing them that I just don't want to mess around with anything else. Alright, so let's continue this way. And down here, we'll see that there's a bunch of them in this room. And we can just drop this trap right on them. Kill them all. Feels good to use a trap that way. That one was a little close, but we nailed it. <laughs> I'm just waiting to mess that up because I'm a human being. And I will eventually screw one of those up and have it detonate in my face. Now we get a nice reward for killing all those things and coming back down here. Bunch of green gel, full stock of healing items, some sniper rifle ammo. Oh yeah. I do wish that I had a few more trap hearts, but I kind of feel like I always feel that way, so... <laughs> Alright, and now this is going to be the way forward. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about the creepy jiggling safes just yet. And he really, really likes to lock us in rooms that are filled with gas. It's his favorite thing to do. And so, similar to the Kidman section, we are on a little bit of a time limit here, where we've got to turn all these cranks and turn off the gas before the air becomes completely toxic and kills us. Let's get out our sniper rifle. And that just makes those guys such a non-issue. It's fantastic.
All right, we have succeeded at switching the gas off. Now, I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Those guys really often drop a uh, green gel. But not today, it would seem. Now, we're going to have a few more of them up here. And really, the only way you can get in a lot of trouble in this section is if you miss your headshots on these guys. It's also a little bit hard to see in here. I don't know if I hit that one. It didn't sound good. Usually it makes a nice squishy sound when you actually nail it. Huh. Not clear. Right, let's back on up. But the nice thing about these guys is that they're pretty slow. And they're also pretty stupid where they can't really effectively mantle or climb ladders. The only thing they do really well is not really dying to your conventional weapons. Oh! <laughs> There we go. Oh, he just barely dodged that. That was fantastic. Oh, man. <laughs> I really do hate wasting a sniper rifle round, but I think we're going to be okay. All right, so let's check out over this way first. Is this where I want to go? Maybe it's left first. I get really lost in here. This level design is fairly non-linear in that you can kind of choose any way you want to tackle this. The best way is going this way first, but you can really do it in any order you want. But that means that I tend to get really lost. Non-linear level design does not really agree with me. I'm just like, I don't even know where I am. I'm the kind of person that gets lost on the way to the grocery store, and I've been there a hundred times. Now these camera angles that they do like this on a lot of these levers are just in case you choose to run away from them, and they're kind of walking towards you as you're closing that door. It's pretty cool, um, and it definitely works as a nice little piece of tense, uh, I don't know, lever turning, I guess you could say. But I tend not to run away from those guys because they're so easy to deal with with the sniper rifle. Now I'm going to try to pistol this guy. Look at the accuracy there. I had the reticle right on him. And if he gets too close to that, now I can't do that anymore. <laughs> Okay. Well, he didn't take too many bullets, but he ends up clipping into this pipe. Now, let's see if I can burn these guys when they get close. We could just avoid them. Once again, they're not very smart. But I want to kill them all. Ugh. I hate the pistol so much. What do I have? Four shotgun shells? Maybe that'll be fine. Can I kind of push that guy over there? Not really. Okay. Okay, this one finally started coming towards me. Will this work out? Yes! Ooh, he almost got me. You know, I should have just burned this body. What was I thinking? Well, that was a bit of a waste of shotgun shells, but I think we're going to be just fine. We're going to get a bunch of locker keys in this chapter, so ammunition is not really going to be a huge problem. And once again, 
before this part, they could be crawling towards you, but I just have more fun killing the enemies. I really detest running away from them. Something about enemies in horror games where they have that... They do a great job with sound design and creature design to elicit this kind of primal fear response in you. Um... So, I want to talk about this for just one sec. So, this right here is the reason why we did the left part first. If we don't turn off the gas, when we do the right part, this whole big pile of goodies here, if I can get a look at it, is completely inaccessible, and you don't want that, particularly because of the goddess statue right there. But we will be able to get those no problem. Now, what I was saying is that... When I get scared, I kind of get angry. Like, I want revenge for being afraid, if that makes sense. Like, I want to kill those things. They make me mad in a, in a weird way. <laughs> so if I can enact revenge on them for creeping me out, I choose to do that whenever possible. And we can grab this lithograph, and that will pretty much be the end of this section. Alright, let's keep going. We can pop it in here, I suppose. Just one more. Just one more indeed, and that is going to be over this way. Alright, just making sure there's nothing behind me. Let's get in this room. There's going to be a decent amount of stuff to find in here. Namely, this recording. That cockroach. That sycophant. Living off me. Feeding off my work. I'll have to figure out how we got the combination to my safe. But there's no time for that now. I'm so close. No one can ever have that data. It is mine. My only way. Whoever opens that safe next had better be ready to pay the price. And while I love his voice acting, I think that one is a little silly, where is th does the Keeper exist because he's mad that someone got the combination to his safe? <laughs> is that really why? Anyway, the reason we came up here is to find this goddess statue, so let's punch it in the face. Oh no! <laughs> Seb Sebastian is not an expert puncher, let's put it that way, but I really don't want to waste any bullets right now. And you certainly can melee this. Oh, why? Okay, we had more trouble with that than I would have liked. <laughs> Basically, in order to melee right in front of you, you press aim and then you press triangle, and I hit the wrong button because I'm an idiot. But one handgun bullet is not going to make or break this video, so let's keep going. We'll go ahead and disarm this trap over here. And now we want to shoot these, because if we progress into this area, we will get killed by the spikes that drop, and we need to ride them up. And one of these lovely gentlemen is going to fall in here with us. But I'm going to make sure he doesn't bother me. And now the way forward is clear. We are getting fairly low on ammunition, which is a little concerning. Maybe I should have hit the safe room before this, but I would really like to take all my green gel with me. Gotta be a trap. 
Gotta be a trap indeed. Now... Fortunately, this part will mean that I don't really need to spend any bullets at all. Um, basically, that trap in the center of the room is very easy to use. And so we are going to go ahead and use it. Now, when we turn this lever, a bunch of dudes are going to pop out of that room. Like a huge number of them. And so what we're going to want to do is kind of avoid them in this area. And they're very easy to avoid. These guys are slow. Like molasses. And we want to herd them all over here. Look at how many there are. Six of them? Come on. But I am not doing this with bullets. And here's what I mean about them mantling. Watch this. <laughs> it's just so slow. And now we want to make sure they all get in the trap. Come on, guys. These guys are getting a little too close for comfort, so I'm just going to pull it. Oh, perfect. Wow, I rarely get all of them in one trap pull. That's awesome. And I love it. They're just impaled. <laughs> Did they drop anything for me? All right, 200 green gel for killing six enemies with one trap hole. It seems kind of paltry, but... Do like finding some shotgun shells. That is nice. Now down here, we're going to find that uh, big old goodie room that I'm very interested in doing, which is why I've done this whole part the way I have. And you gotta watch your feet here, because there are a couple traps, and they are hard to spot. <laughs> and we definitely want to disarm these bombs, because I want as many trap parts as I can possibly find. And I feel like the fact that they kind of load you up with trap parts in keeper sections is kind of a clue that you should really use the agony crossbow on him. It's just the best thing to do. All right, and that's going to be our third locker key, so we're only looking for one more. So we're doing pretty good on that. This part, I feel, could have been maybe designed a little bit better, where it's like you, you go all the way down there and then you just walk all the way back up. A lot of uh, times these diversions and hunting things down, I think good level design would be kind of dumping me back out where I want to be rather than just making me backtrack the entire time. But it's a minor nitpick for sure. Come on, Sebastian, you can do it. All right. Okay, this part is a little bit tricky, but I think we're going to be able to do it. So we want to aggro this one over here as quickly as possible. And we're going to try to use the trap on these guys, but this part is much, much narrower. All right. Man, that all went perfectly. Now, as we head up, we want to run into this little secret passage here. And that should be our last locker key, if I am not mistaken, which I don't think I am. But here's a good example of a diversion letting you back out where you actually want to go. Like, that's a, de a decent secret passage, where you just end up, instead of having to backtrack, 
uh, right facing your way out, pretty much. I like that. I'm just gonna loop back around once just to make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't think so, though. Yeah, we're good. Okay. It begs the question, why talk about level design like that <laughs> if you're just gonna backtrack anyway? The answer is, I don't know. And now we're back at our main hub section. And the callback, I think, that's going on here to Resident Evil 4 is the castle section where you have to find the three uh, heads of the animals. Um, and then once you find all three, you can kind of continue forward. And this won't be the last of this kind of level design, we'll see. But now that we're done with the side paths, why don't we head to uh, Safe Haven? Lily's birth announcement. We welcome with love Lily Lynn Castellanos, born July 18th, 2006, 9.56 a.m., 7 pounds, 3 ounces, 14 inches. Proud parents Sebastian and Myra Castellanos. And here's the newspaper... Sort of about where we are right now, so let's check this out. Catacombs found. Catacombs found beneath Parish. Pastor says nothing to lose sleep over. Who took care of this place? Workmen repairing collapsed floor discover man-made passages beneath Cedar Hill Church. Claim they saw mummies. Parish denies ac access to historians, claiming sacrilege. In type, I see. And then we're going to find this missing persons poster for Chris Taylor, construction foreman. Disappeared while overseeing repairs of a fallen church floor. Repairs were nearly completed, so it is unlikely he fell. And now, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't actually know who Chris is supposed to be, other than just a clue that where we are is beneath the uh, collapsed church floor. Uh, but why don't we go ahead and use our locker keys? We have a whole bunch of them. I think we have five. Before we hit the chair. We may get some green gel drops in here, so I definitely want to check that out. Yes, I love it. 7,000 even. Don't need any more shock bolts. I should really probably be using those more. Nice refill on shotgun shells. Ooh, another green gel drop. Yes. And now we can get started on the other side. I think I'll start from over here. And more handgun bullets that I can't take with me. Okay. Now we've got a decent amount of green gel, 41,000. So let's hit the chair. And now that I have that Harpoon Bolt upgrade, the world is kind of my oyster. But I think one thing I want to do is bump matches up to 30 and just get that done. It's only 5,000, and it means that basically I will never have to leave matches behind for the rest of the game. So let's do that. And now, I probably want to put more damage on my Explosive Bolts. Yeah, I can just finish it up. Why not? And then let's make sure all of our weapons actually have crit chance on them. I think that's a good idea. Wow, actually, it can have a 100% chance of crit? That's really interesting. Huh, that's actually kind of sweet. You know what? Let's go for it. Sixty percent chance, and we can get it up to a hundred. That's sweet. And I guess I want a little more damage for my shotgun. That works for me. Maybe my headshots will even be one-hit kills now. All right, I think it's time to get out of here. And put in that last lithograph.
And now the way down is open to finish the level, but this chapter's pretty long as well, so I think we're gonna call it a day here. So I just wanna say thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.